Hi right, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at properties. Now, you may have seen these before, you may even know what they are, but hopefully I'm going to try and show you a few little neat tricks that you can do with them to make coding a little bit easier for you. So, first of all, what is a property? Well, a property is a member that provides a simple and robust way to read, write, and compute the value of a private variable. Now, as you probably already know, the private variable can't be accessed outside of the script that it's currently in. But sometimes we want to amend that value from elsewhere, but we don't want to publicly open it for anything to change. And this is a perfect use for properties. Because the way that they work is just like a standard public variable on the front of them. But actually, behind the scenes, they're using special methods called accessors. And these accessors are the get and set functions. So, as the names actually suggest, the get function will return the value of a otherwise private variable. Whereas the set function is going to set that value. So, in essence, you're able to control a private variable without directly accessing the variable itself. Now you may be a little bit confused as to why this is actually a thing, why not make it public, but I'll show you a few examples in a second. The really cool thing about, I use the term cool very loosely, uh, about properties is the fact that you can customise those get and set functions to do whatever you actually want them to do. So I'll show you what I mean, but first I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go follow him on Twitter, check out his website, have a look at the latest updates for his upcoming game. I'm sure you're all going to love it. And I also just want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so we're going to start with the most basic usage and work up from there to the more advanced. So this is a, an example of a basic property. We see we have a private integer score that we can't access anywhere other than inside basic property. But we have a public int score with a capital S, and this is our public property. We see we have the get function, which is responsible for returning the score value, the private score value. And we see we have a set function that's responsible for setting the private score value to the value we've passed in. So this value keyword will be replaced with the value that you actually pass in to the property. So I'll show you a quick example of that. So here we've just got a little tester script. We've got a reference to a basic property object. And down here in the start method, we're able to call prop.score with the capital S, our property, equals 10. And then we can do a debug.log of that same value. So what that's going to do, that's going to set, first of all, score equal to value, which in this instance is 10. So this is our value. And then it's going to return score when we do our debug.log. So we're controlling a private variable from elsewhere in our project. And if we run this, we should see in our console, we get 10 the value that we set it to. So okay, that's all well and good, that works fine, but we want to actually make this a little bit more useful for us. So what kind of things can we do with properties that we can't do with standard variables? Well, like I said before, we can actually customize the get and set functions. So if we take a look at this example, again, it's another simple one, but it's showing you a little bit more of what properties can do. So we have two private strings this time. We have a first name and a last name. This is obviously my real last name. And the property this time is public again. This time it's returning a string, and this one we're just calling player name. So when we call the get function, it's going to return the first name plus a space plus a last name automatically for us. So back in my test script, I've just amended this. So now we've got player data. And all we're going to do is debug.log play a name. So now if we play, we should see we get Mike from Comp3 Interactive right down at the bottom. And we haven't called either of the private variables because we can't. And one more thing about this one, you'll notice we don't actually have a set method. 
So effectively, that makes player name a read-only field. There's no way that we can amend first name and last name outside of this player data script. So just like any other private field, but we can access them as read-only. And the final physical example that I've got for you is my personal favourite. This is nine times out of ten how I use properties whenever I'm making a game in Unity. Specifically, when I want to update UI fields. So if we take a look at this script, our score manager, we can see that I've got a basic singleton pattern, that's irrelevant. But I have a score text, which is a text mesh pro element, a private integer for the score, and then a public property. Now when we call the get method on our score property, it'll just return our score value. But if we look down here, whenever we call our set method, it'll set the scores value, but then automatically update the text mesh pro element to reflect that. So if we do a little bit of tweaking inside our tester script, we can see that now all this is gonna do in one line is update our score value inside of our score manager and then the score manager is automatically going to update the UI element to match that. So we pop over to Unity, we see that we have our score manager on our canvas and we've attached a score text game object, this zero right here, into our score text and in our tester we're going to update that by one every frame every time update runs. So if we click play we should see the value starts climbing. So we've managed to update our score and the UI using one single line of code. Now try and tell me that that's not useful. <laughs> and we can take this kind of method a little bit further. If we take a look at my other examples we see I have something very similar but for a health system. Now again, this time, getting health will just return health. But if we try and set health, if our value that we're trying to set it to goes past our max health, which is 100, we set max health, uh, we set health to max health, or else we just set it to the value, and then we'll update that text field just like we did with the score manager. So really, you can tailor these however you need them. Again, we also have something called auto properties, which is perfect for read-only fields. So as you can see, we have a public string API URL. We only have a get method, and by default, that is set to our API's URL. So all we need to do is call, in this instance, other examples dot API URL, and it'll return a URL. And finally, if we are only using a get, we can make it even simpler by using a lambda, this little arrow right here. So as you'll remember, this is exactly the same example as we had previously, where I've got my first name and last name, but because I'm never actually setting player name, I can do this on one line. So my property is now public string player name, like it was before. Using the lambda, I can then return this value. And I'm sure you guys are going to come up with hundreds, if not thousands, of different uses for this. So if you end up using properties in any of your games, drop a comment below and let me know how you use them and how you found it. I know ever since I learned about properties all those years ago, I've been using them ever since. And I think you're probably going to be the same. So I think that's all I've got for you for this video. I hope it's been useful for you. And I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bites as Unity hints and tips.